what the function needs to do its thing. All right. What does the function need to do its thing? It needs to know the amount of the bill, the level of service, whether it's dining in or not. So we grab those things from the form. Now I did this in a long way. You actually don't have to create variables. You could actually just put this in place of that. But I think it's good to do this um, as an exercise to see sort of the long way to do it. So, the button click event gathers the input parameters, calls the function, and stores the result somewhere so it can do something with it. And then finally, does something with that, what with the output. Now in this case, what it's doing with the output is it is uh, simply displaying it in a label. In other cases, maybe we would take the uh, tip and add it to the bill to get a total amount, you know, if the requirements changed. The idea is, though, is we have flexibility. We can pull that information from any place on the page, all right? Call the function, get the results. We can then put that result anywhere on the page. So that function is no longer coupled at all to the user interface. This code's tied to the user interface, but that's okay. Something has to glue all this stuff together, all right? And the button click event is the glue between our business logic and our user interface, all right? So let's make sure it works. Let's do our regression testing. I'm gonna go and remove validation because that will help me illustrate a point that I have next. All right. Oh, and I'm going to get rid of this for now. All right. So I go in and I pick the bill amount is $111. It is dine in. And there is average service. The tip is 16.65, which is correct. All right. Now to illustrate my point, let's say I have this. Oops. Let's say I want to change this. I want to have a text box here where I could enter in an amount, click a button, and see how much, assuming it's dine in. A poor tip would be an average tip and an excellent tip. All right. So let's go and do that. So I'll go and I'll add, that's why I had to remove the validation. I'll go and add a text box here. And we'll call it txt bill2. And I'll go put three labels on here. And we'll call it label four. Label average and label excellent. So now, what I want to have happen is when I put in the amount in that text box and click the other button, it calls the same function. It gets the value for the bill from this text box. And it fills in these labels, assuming dine-in and poor, assuming dine-in and average, assuming dine-in and excellent. So how would I do that? Well, I'd go here. I would I'm just going to copy this code real quick and get rid of a lot of it.
For the first one, I'm going to assume poor and dine in of D. And I'm going to put and label poor the answer. Then I'll repeat this two more times. Hoping that I get the right letters right. So now, I can calculate the tip two ways, all right? I can go in, I could probably, yeah, I could go in and put in an amount, calculate that, oops, ah, forgot to change that to pull from the other text box, my mistake, so that should be text bill two. There's a tip for poor, there's a tip for average, there's a tip for excellent. All right, so let's look and let's compare this to what we had, and I hope you can remember back to what we had at the beginning of class. At the beginning of class, all this code here was associated with the button, and it was tightly coupled to the user interface. It was on the button that that code pulled the values from the positions on the page, from the from certain specific positions on the page, which means that we couldn't do that last thing we just did. All right, because again, um, it uh, it was looking for the values in a specific place. So we first moved it out of the um, we first moved it out of the button so that we could call it from two places, but it was still coupled to the user interface. All right, in the sense that it was still looking for things in a certain text box, looking for values in drop downs and radio buttons. So we removed that and replaced and made the function a black box. We, we replaced looking at the form at the text box with um, the arguments to the function. All right, we added arguments to the function. So we could call that function anywhere on our page and we could supply the values however we wanted to. In one case, we get the value from one text box. In another case, we get the value from a different text box. In one case, we get the service level and the other parameters from drop downs and radio buttons. In the other case, we hard code. We default those values. Doesn't matter. Our function doesn't care where we get those values from. As long as we supply those values, it gives the result. And again, since that's not specifically putting it in a particular label, it's simply returning the answer, whoever calls the function can decide where to put the answer. All right? So we've done almost everything that we can do to decouple this. It's still somewhat coupled to the page because this code lives in this page's code behind. All right? What if we had a different page that needed to do this calculation? All right? Well, then we haven't made any progress in that regard. That's where we'll come into on Tuesday of creating a custom class that will have this in there and uh, essentially will move the function from this page to its own class. This step was probably the hardest step. Um, you really have to understand arguments and return values for this to work. This is a step that sort of confuses a lot of people. Putting it in its own class is pretty straightforward. All right? Um, and we'll cover that next week. Um, any questions about any of this? Yes? So you took the validation off because... I took the validation off... Yeah, what, what I probably sh could have done or should have done is made a separate form for this, and then that form's validation would go off. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, 
I didn't want to have to put something in these fields if I was clicking on that. So that was that was just me cheating a little bit in the interest of time. If you oh. did want to keep it on two forms and have validation, is there a way to check more specifically what you're checking to say if it's valid? Uh, like, I you know, is this validator, this validator, this validator? I am, I am not sure how that would work. I would think that putting it on two forms, uh, when you clicked it, it would only do the validations associated with that form. I would think. But I guess I don't know that for a fact. Other questions? The only reason I even added that extra text box and all that is to really show what we've gained from it. Show that the fact that we've decoupled it, now we have a lot more flexibility as far as where the data comes from and where the data goes. All right. I don't know if this is a practical page design or, or not really, you know. Um, so, um, at any rate. Yeah, the, 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 bigger, the bigger point is how, uh, how we've separated things out and uh, now we can reuse that code elsewhere on the page. We've done a good job making it reusable on the page. Our next step is, is to take it and make it reusable when we go between pages. Other questions? All right, I'll be sure to post this example and we'll pick up on this next time.